Tony, a, a while back we were talking about speakers, and uh, yeah. I have something new. So I'd love it if you'd come down and uh, get a listen to them and see what you think. And heck, maybe we could do a show. Sounds like a plan, Bob. Let's do it. Hey, Tony. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Good. How are you? Not bad. I heard you got some new speakers. You want to listen? I do. All right. Come All on right. in. Wow, so these are it, huh? The key threes. Yes, yes. They look great. Thank you. Man, I, you know, I'd like to set up something like this in my home, but I know that there's probably some challenges that I would face. What are some of the challenges that people would face when setting up a home hi-fi system? So the initial problem that I see is just picking out all the equipment you need to buy. Mm -hmm. So speakers, cables, amplifiers, sources, all of that. That complexity is daunting. Right. What else? The room. So the elephant in the room is the room. What people don't realize is how much the room affects how speakers sound. Okay. So what happens is you put a speaker in a room and it's sort of like a light bulb. So that light bulb, when you turn that light bulb on, it shines all the way around 360 degrees. The lower frequencies coming out of your speaker do the same thing. They wrap around and they bounce off the sidewall, off the, off the back wall, off the furniture, off the floor, off the ceiling. So if I just put a speaker against the back wall of my room, you're saying the sound not only comes out the front, but it radiates out in all directions. So there's Correct. also sound going towards the back wall and then bouncing off of that and coming back towards me and effectively muddying up the sound yes. because it's not arriving at the same time when I hear it. Right, absolutely, that's a big problem. Okay, well how do people normally solve the problem of reflections then? So there's a couple of ways that you can do it in your home. So one of the ways is, is placement of the speaker. But in a studio environment where they're recording sound, what they typically do is they build out a soffit which they contain the speakers in. So it's like, above your, it's like above your kitchen cabinets or where the ducts run in your house. So it's a, it's a wall in, that, in, that the speakers are built into. Okay. So you would take this you would so take if, this. So if you wanted to do it in your home, you'd have to basically build out a wall out here and then put the speakers so that the front of the speakers are even with that wall. That Absolutely. would be the soffit design. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so that way, yeah, you don't have a back wall to bounce or any side walls for the sound to reflect off of. It's just Correct. coming straight out of the wall. Okay. Yeah, so that solves that problem very nicely. Well, I see you haven't done that here, so how do the key 3s solve that problem? So the key 3s are built with drivers that face out the side and out the rear, and those drivers are used to cancel out the reflections. So is that kind of like how noise-canceling headphones work when yeah. I'm on an airplane or something? So a noise-canceling headphone works by receiving sound, and then when it hears the outside sound, it transmits it to your ear out of phase. So that's what the key 3s do. They actually transmit the sound out of phase, out of those side and rear drivers. You're not getting that side and rear Reflection. reflections off the wall. It's Gone. just out of the front. Okay, so it's canceling kind of like a seesaw. When the sound goes up in the front, it goes down in the back, so it kind of cancels out right. the reflections Right, absolutely. There. That's how it works. Well, what about the amplifiers? Because I don't see any amplifier here connected to your speakers. The amplifiers are actually built into the speaker. Each little driver inside of the speaker, there is an amplifier and in front of that a digital analog converter. So there's six 250 watt amplifiers in each speaker. Wow, that sounds like it would be amazing. Yeah. How do you have everything hooked up here then if there's no amplifier? The key three when it comes has an input on the back. That input on the back of the speaker can be either be a digital input or an analog input left and right. How do you have it connected right now? I'm using that analog input on mine to my turntable, but I need more inputs in that, so I have what's called a key control, which gives me additional inputs, and that's sitting right here on top of the little cabinet. Oh, great. Let's take a look at that. Okay. This is the key control. It gives you the ability to power the speakers on and off, okay? Just by pushing that button. Just by pushing that button. Adjusting the volume. Okay, so okay. that's the volume control knob. Volume control for them. Uh, just like your preamplifier on your conventional stereo, select the different inputs. So you've got 
coax, optical, USB, and XLR. XLR. So does this have XLR inputs or? No, is... the XLR input is on the speaker. So this okay. lets you switch so that to that lets XLR. So you switch to the speaker Correct. XLR. How does this thing get power? Is... It's powered through the key uh, link control cable here that talks to the speakers. Okay, and that looks just like a like an Ethernet cable. Right? Correct, but don't plug your Ethernet in. It's not really Ethernet. It just uses that same physical cable. Right? Okay, so it's just a digital signal going over that. Right. What other sort of things does this uh, do? So f I guess, do I have to use this thing to adjust the volume then all the time? Absolutely not. You can turn it off and on with a standard remote such as this little Apple remote. Okay, well, that's convenient. So yeah. you could do power, volume, mute, that Switch sort input, of stuff. Switch input, right, okay. et cetera, right. Uh, what else does this control do? So it uh, actually allows you to do some of the controls of the speaker to control where the speaker's placed in the room, uh, change the uh, tone controls inside. So what do you mean by that? Like, how, how, why would I need to adjust where the speaker's so placed in a room? when we were talking before, we were talking about as the speaker's placed in the room, it, it reflects more off the wall. Mm -hmm. As you take the speaker, as you move it further back closer to the wall, you have to, you have to in the speaker, adjust that so it, it, it reduces those reflections, stops that reflection. Okay, because I know that on my uh, studio monitors that I have, it has adjustments for that because when you right. place it against a wall, it tends to amplify the lower bass frequencies. Absolutely. And when you place it in a corner, that effect, that amplification effect is actually uh, further um, enhanced, so you have to compensate it for it more when you put it in Absolutely. a Absolutely, so that, that same control is built in to this, and you the, can adjust it all. You can adjust here. it here, or if you don't have this individually in each speaker. Okay. And what else can you turn parts of the speaker on and off through this? Right. These speakers, as they're sitting here, have that BXT extension module underneath, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But I can actually turn those off so that we can just listen to the speed, the key three, or we can listen to the key three with the BXT on it. Awesome. So you're saying you could turn off those bottom units for the key threes? Right, the absolutely. BXTs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I actually brought a couple of my studio monitors today, and I'm really curious to hear how they sound compared to the key threes. So okay. why don't I go out and I'll bring them in? Sounds good. Let's all do right. it. So you get all that all stuff, right. Tony? Yep. Good, good. Here we okay. go. Got Stand. some stands. All right. And another stand. Yeah. Two stands. Oh, you didn't put any sand in those, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of these speakers, they are not light. No, they are not, sir. <laughs> All right, let's set these up. We'll start with this one. Okay, sounds good. Now these are Mackie HR824s, the original. Oh, the original ones, okay. Yeah, so these, some of these are, I think uh, I got these like 20 years ago. Oh, okay, so uh, they've been so around a while. They've been around. Um, they've got the Mark IIs now. Okay. But uh, these guys are pretty hefty, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down. Lay it down. Right. And have it come out that way. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On these speakers, you've got the input sensitivity, so we'll tune that using a volume level meter. Right. You can have acoustic space, so whole C is when it's in free space, there's no wall. Right. Half is when you have it against a wall, and quarter is when you have it in a corner. Okay. And then we've got the range, so you could do an 80 hertz, 47 or 37, which is full range, so I'll leave it at full range. Full range, okay. High frequency, you can boost it 2 dB or cut it 2 dB, I have it in the middle. Let's leave it level. And I have it on automatic power mode, so okay, it'll so power it'll on when on. it gets a signal. Right. So, All right. And that's really cool. We level the system using pink noise generator. So we got both speakers as close as we can in the environment. I think the first thing I noticed is like in the whistling and the guitar, the keys have a significantly more depth to my ear. It feels like there's more depth in the, in the playback. Yeah, the thing that I noticed is that it seemed to project the sound better, at least for the like the guitar. Right. So it felt like you could hear it a little bit more clearly, mm -hmm. and also kind of the there's definitely a lot more low end extension on right. the key threes. So anytime in that particular track, there's a lot of low end there, and right. anytime you hear that kick there, it just feels really solid. Right. And on the and, key threes. And le let's not discount how good the Mackies are. Right. I mean, those are old speakers. They're still in use today. They perform very, very well. 
definitely, I think the Mackies sounded uh, very in your face when you, you heard the vocals. Right. It was very forward. I don't know if that's necessarily good or bad. I mean, the thing I noticed with the Key 3s is that I heard more stereo imaging right. from them. Right. right. When there were elements of the track that were panned left and you could sort of hear that effect. There's an effect where this bird flying and that was much more distinct, you know, off in the background and off to the side. Also, in her voice when she's singing, you get that a little bit more impact of her voice when she's initially speaking. And then I think the other thing is in the string bass, there's more of the sound of the strings actually vibrating the bass itself. So it's quite a bit more, again, depth there, I think. As I was listening to that track on the Mackies, I felt like I was sitting in front of a stage listening to them perform. Like right. I felt like I was there. The key threes, I felt like there might have been just a little bit more depth there that you could almost like reach out and grab one part of the sound. There's a section in the song where a violin comes in mm -hmm. and that violin is just, it's right there. I mean, it's just so distinct. It's haunting. It's got so much depth and everything. So it's just, it's wonderful. Yeah. That's, I think that was just a, a great track too, the way it was recorded and oh, produced. Yeah, so. yeah it's, it's very well done. Yeah, for me, I thought that was actually a little bit closer as far as the differences between the two speakers. There's definitely a lot of dynamic range in that particular track. Right. And the thing that I know that studio monitors are typically designed to handle very well is a lot of dynamic range because when you're in the studio, you're usually working with unmastered material. It's all right. raw. So you may have very wide rate variations of volume levels. Right, right. To me, both speakers perform very well, but the depth and the feeling of depth and distance and separation of the instruments was significantly uh, larger on the keys. I felt a lot more depth, I think, is the most important thing. That had a lot of complex resonating sounds of the piano string at the very beginning, especially because of the way that they were just holding down the damper pedal and you could hear the entire soundboard of the piano resonating with all the strings. Right, right. And you know, the main difference I heard, I think, is just the key threes. Uh, maybe had a little bit more distinct placement of the notes and the sounds uh, and the imaging there. I, I would love to know how they mic'd the piano in that piece. Um, because that's, it's, it seems to be very strongly recorded and that may just be the way it was produced. To me, what the keys did is when the hammer strike on the piano and the ringing of the string as it echoes down in some of the pieces, that to me was just extremely distinct and just extremely pleasant. That whole harmonic that goes on inside the piano. It was very rich. Yes, it, yes, that's Especially the word. at the beginning where I no noticed the resonating strings and the soundboard and interacting and everything. Yeah. It just sounded very rich on the key threes. Yeah, I think he has a good piano. <laughs> That too, that yeah, doesn't hurt. Probably helps. Well, this has been a really interesting afternoon here. I got a chance to listen to the Key 3s here. Thanks for that. And how much are they again? The Key 3 speaker on a stand with the key control is approximately $20,000. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's, they sound great. Now, what about the BXTs down below? So you add a set of BXTs, that's another 20,000. So 40,000 for the whole system. Okay. Yeah. What the BXT does is it gives you a line source speaker and reduces interactions to the floor and the ceiling more and also gives you much more strength with the power amplification inside of those and improves the control over the room. And the key threes are also marketed to studios as well, right? Yes, there's are. a lot of studio owners and people who work in there who use right. key threes and you know they do sound fantastic and oh, amazing. Yeah. I think so. We've had a little bit of time since we uh, listened to the key threes and it settled in a little bit more. First of all, Bob, I would just want to say that I was pretty blown away at how the key threes sounded just with the the small speakers, not with the BXTs at the bottom and how right. much fullness and low end there was just with those small speaker cabinets. 
Right. And then when you add the BXTs there, that just was phenomenal. You can't unhear that. No. I've been trying. <laughs> yeah, Thanks can't. for reminding so- me about Sorry. It. <laughs> sorry. No problem. One of the things that we talked about is how you tune the speaker's t- to compensate for the room. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've learned a lot more about that, and I've made some delta changes in where the speakers are real close to the corners. Right. And what that has done is it's eliminated more of the reflections from the floor and the reflections from the sidewalls, and the detail is better. It's significantly improved it a lot. I've done some other things, but that was the first step. And it made a huge difference. And it just goes to show you, you have to take a lot of time to tune them. You have to tune it. And you have to get comfortable with what you're listening to. Now I'm much happier with it. I think that's the key is it takes a lot of time to, number one, unlearn what you've heard before in your speaker system and your audio system. And number two, to relearn what your new system sounds like and what's good about it, what's bad about it. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Bob, is that sometimes we get so used to hearing how something should sound that when we actually hear it how it's supposed to sound, we might think it's wrong. But really, that's how it was intended to sound in the first place. So it's really critical to calibrate your system properly. And that's one of the things that these room compensating speakers uh, are supposed to help you with. Well, they were awesome speakers, Bob. Uh, Thank you. I, it sounds like you're really happy with them. I Very. wish I could invest the money in them at this time, but <laughs> I'm still trying to forget, Bob. Still trying to forget. Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for inviting me over again to your house to listen to them. Thanks for watching the three techs.